Gunpowder, also known as black powder, is one of the most transformative inventions in human history. It changed the way wars were fought, how mining was done, and even how fireworks lit up the night sky. But have you ever wondered how this powerful substance is actually made? In today's video, we're diving deep into the fascinating process of gunpowder production, from its ancient origins to the chemistry behind its explosive power. So buckle up because this is going to be a fiery journey. Let's start with the basics. Gunpowder is a mixture of three primary ingredients, potassium nitrate, charcoal, and sulfur. Each of these components plays a crucial role in the chemical reaction that makes gunpowder so effective. Potassium nitrate, also known as saltpeter, acts as the oxidizer. It provides the oxygen needed for combustion. Charcoal serves as the fuel, and sulfur helps to lower the ignition temperature and increase the speed of the reaction. When combined in the right proportions, these ingredients create a mixture that burns rapidly and produces a large volume of hot gas, which is what propels bullets, blasts rocks, or launches fireworks into the sky. Historically, gunpowder was first developed in China around the 9th century. Alchemists were experimenting with various substances in search of immortality and instead stumbled upon a formula that would change the world. The original recipes varied, but over time, the ideal ratio was standardized to roughly 75% potassium nitrate, 15% charcoal, and 10% sulfur. This ratio provides the most efficient burn and has been used for centuries in everything from cannons to muskets to pyrotechnics. Now let's talk about how these ingredients are sourced and prepared. Potassium nitrate can be found naturally in mineral deposits, but historically, it was often produced through a labor-intensive process involving decomposing organic matter. In medieval Europe, people would collect manure, mix it with wood ash and urine, and let it sit in a nitrate bed for months. The resulting liquid was then filtered and evaporated to leave behind saltpeter crystals. Today, potassium nitrate is manufactured industrially, making the process much cleaner and more efficient. Charcoal is made by burning wood in a low oxygen environment, which removes water and volatile compounds, leaving behind almost pure carbon. Willow, pine, and alder are popular choices for gunpowder grade charcoal because they produce a fine, consistent powder. Sulfur, on the other hand, is mined from volcanic regions or extracted from natural gas and petroleum refining. Once the ingredients are ready, the next step is mixing them. But this isn't as simple as tossing everything into a bowl and stirring. Gunpowder must be mixed very carefully to ensure safety and consistency. Traditionally, the components were ground separately to a fine powder using a mortar and pestle or a ball mill. Then, they were combined in a wet slurry to reduce the risk of accidental ignition. Water or alcohol was added to dampen the mixture, and the resulting paste was pressed into cakes, which were then dried and broken up into granules. These granules were sorted by size depending on their intended use. Fine powder for firearms, coarse grains for cannons, and specialized blends for fireworks. In modern manufacturing, the process is more controlled and mechanized. Ball mills are still used to grind and blend the ingredients, but they're enclosed in protective casings and operated remotely to minimize risk. The wet mixing process is also automated, and the drying and granulation stages are done in climate-controlled environments. Safety is paramount, as gunpowder is highly flammable and sensitive to friction, heat, and static electricity. Workers wear anti-static clothing, and equipment is grounded to prevent sparks. 
Even the buildings are designed with blast walls and venting systems to contain any accidental explosions. Once the gunpowder is produced, it undergoes rigorous testing. Manufacturers check for burn rate, moisture content, and grain size to ensure the powder meets specifications. Samples are ignited in controlled environments to measure performance, and any batch that doesn't meet standards is discarded or reprocessed. Gunpowder must be stored in cool, dry conditions away from any sources of ignition. It's typically packed in airtight containers and labeled with hazard warnings. In many countries, its production and sale are strictly regulated, requiring licenses and inspections to ensure public safety. So what happens when gunpowder is ignited? The chemical reaction is a rapid combustion process. Potassium nitrate releases oxygen, which allows the charcoal and sulfur to burn quickly. This produces a large volume of hot gases, mainly carbon dioxide and nitrogen, along with solid residues like potassium carbonate and potassium sulfate. The sudden expansion of gases creates pressure, which can be harnessed to propel a projectile or create a loud bang. The reaction is exothermic, meaning it releases heat, and it happens in milliseconds. That's why gunpowder is so effective in firearms and explosives. It delivers a powerful punch in a very short time. Despite its age, gunpowder is still widely used today. While modern explosives like TNT and smokeless powder have largely replaced it in military applications, black powder remains essential in certain fields. It's used in antique firearms, historical reenactments, and pyrotechnics. Fireworks, for example, rely on gunpowder to launch shells into the air and trigger colorful explosions. It's also used in mining and quarrying, where controlled blasts are needed to break rock. And for hobbyists and historians, making gunpowder is a way to connect with the past and understand the science behind one of humanity's most impactful inventions. So there you have it, the story of gunpowder and how it's made. From ancient alchemy to modern chemistry, this humble mixture of three ingredients has shaped the course of history. Whether you're fascinated by science, history, or just love a good explosion, gunpowder is a topic that never fails to ignite curiosity. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed uncovering the hidden stories behind everyday things, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Genosco. Hit the bell so you never miss a new discovery. Until next time, keep exploring the world's surprising backstories.